Well, praise the Lord. <clears throat> Much is going on. Not only is the plain stick missing, we now have two buildings that have been had an explosion in them and come down in New York in Harlem. They're not saying it's terrorist, but they're not saying it's not terrorist. I think that's interesting. They said there was just an explosion and two buildings come down. There were some people killed, people hurt, injured. <clears throat> There's, you, you know, it, there is so much going on nowadays. But Max happened to remind me of the Philadelphia experiment. Now, I don't know if all the people that are younger than me uh, remember the Philadelphia experiment. Uh, ex uh, they made a movie of it. They even had it on sci-fi one time. And I will put links down to where you can go read about it. Some claim it was a true event. Others claim that it wasn't. But back in World War II, back in the 40s, they were doing experiments. Not only um, um, America, but other countries trying to do experiments with time travel. See, that would be in the ultimate war weapon. If they could get a device that would not only cloak the ship or plane or whatever they were in, but they would send it forward in time travel. Um, many things could be stopped. If they could send someone or a group or whatever ahead in time to execute somebody or maybe back in time even. Perfectly back in time. See, if they could have sent somebody back in time to when Hitler was littler, they could have killed him. And then what? World War II wouldn't have never happened. Hitler would have never been there to become Chancellor of Germany. Uh, you know, these things that happen over there in Germany wouldn't have happened because the man would have died at a, a younger age. Um, there's been many pictures, many speculations. If only we could have done this or we could have traveled back in time and done that. Or travel forward in time and seen an episode that was going to happen in time forward then when you get back to your own time then you could go kill that person or stop that event before it could manifest in the future grandiose ideals very grandiose but did the philadelphia experiment really happen there are men that were on that ship it was a ship that was, had time travel on it. Um, it was in Philadelphia. It's called the Philadelphia Experiment because it was in Philadelphia Harbor on August 1943. A ship, 173, on the side of it, uh, had an experiment done on it and it was sitting there in the Philadelphia Harbor all of a sudden it was there and then it wasn't there and it was supposed to be projected up into the future you know time travel <sighs> that's what it was all about So, why would America want to do that? Because Germany was trying to do that, and they were trying to beat Germany into that experiment 
of time travel. My word. I hadn't thought about that. I had thought about just cloaking. What if they did take somebody, they got a machine on that plane, and it did a, a 90 degree angle. It flew back over, and it was headed to come across. Wow. What if they got a time travel machine on there, you know, like the Philadelphia Experiment, and set it up. I hadn't thought about that until Max said something. Because if somebody's experimenting with that, what about terrorists? Hmm. Why would the terrorists want to try and try time travel forward? Hmm. I know that they they have prophecy about their type of messiah, the mafia D or whatever he w it was, I mean, I can't think of it right now, uh, the third or tenth Iman or whatever is supposed to come and be a leader and bring peace and, and Islam would rule and Jesus would come back to earth and claim that he lied, that he didn't die and that his, that, uh, that uh, he believed in all, he believes in Allah, and he will stand and fight for the the fifth Amman or whatever this false Messiah or something. I mean, you know, they have a big long thing. You can look it up on the internet. I have a film, a, a video I did, and I put links down to where they related to their prophecies. So, what if somehow or another they got a hold of this thing and they got on because they're, they're really rapid in that area where that plane took off, you know. Um, and Sodom, who's, I mean not Sodom, his saying, but uh, the one that got killed, that President Obama killed, uh, Bin Laden. Bin Laden, you know, was very, very rich, and he could have forked up the money. I mean, just because he got killed, because we killed him and dumped him out in the ocean, didn't mean that his money died with him. And what if he had already sent it out for people to be able to do this? He was a very intelligent man. I'm sure he heard about the Philadelphia Experiment. I mean, you know, he wasn't ignorant. He was very intelligent very well educated in our schools here in America and had a lot of money. So what if they got a hold of this thing and they got a hold of it inside the plane and somehow set it off? The expanders, the black boxes wouldn't be working. It would shut them down, shut them off because they weren't in our time. What if they're no longer in our time period? What if they're in the future? trying to promote or see about promoting the events that will happen one day or they think will happen one day um, I think they might get shocked I don't know uh, maybe uh, I'm just another stupid ideal but I know that there were people that actually was on that boat when the Philadelphia experiment happened and said it did happen. Men died because it was like a rip in time and they went forward into time and then when they come back some men was on the deck and they were caught inside the steel half inside and half out and of course they died. So, and I believe it's possible. I believe we have scientists that, that work on all sorts of things, even now. And you know what is so funny? Now, what if, hmm, no, that wouldn't have been, 
possible because the 1948 was when Israel became a state. I think it was in 1947 when out here in, uh, we're supposed to have a spaceship crash out in New Mexico. Um, hmm. But what if they, they got technology from out there? from aliens and I know some people don't believe in aliens well I'm telling you they're fallen angels okay they are fallen angels it talks about it in Genesis uh, that come down I mean come on let me read it not even mentioning the book of uh, Enoch I, I do believe that the book of Enoch existed in it I don't know if it was from Enoch, but I think it was a history book about the time when, when, that somebody wrote during the time when uh, Noah was, uh, before or during the time of Noah, and when the flood happened. And it says in Genesis 6, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that were fair, and they took them wise of all that which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is flesh, yet his days will be a hundred and twenty years. And there were giants on the earth in these days. Now, a lot of people say they were the Nephilim, that they were uh, born from the fallen angels and the women uh, in the earth in these days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in, came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, and some become mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great on earth, and that every imagination of their thought of their heart was only evil contents. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth. It grieved his heart, and he said, I shall destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them." But Noah found grace in his eyes of the Lord. So Noah found grace because he had a pure bloodline. Some say that maybe his sons married uh, women that were born from the fallen. I don't believe that. I believe that this bloodline had to be pure. Pure because it would go down through the generations. And that's where Jesus Christ, Yeshua, come from. So there couldn't be any pollution of the fallen angels mixing their DNA with the DNA of human, of Noah and his sons and daughter-in-laws and their children. It could not be because this bloodline, this DNA bloodline had to be a perfect bloodline all the way to when Jesus Christ, Yeshua, was born from Mary. So therefore, he, he, he killed and he killed all the beasts. Why would he kill all the beasts? Because the beast is well known by the Greek mythology, if it was mythology, you would see half animals and half humans. So there, I believe there was experimentation going on even back in those days. So, so there's much has went on from beginning of time and the fallen angels have been around for decades from the beginning and the fallen angels are still here because I, I truly believe that we call them aliens because people don't know what else to call them because see they don't want to say they're fallen angels because if you say oh the aliens are fallen angels then you have to confess there is really a God for all the atheists out there that don't want to believe that there is a God or Satan or anything they would have to go yeah well there was a God and, and there he created and he did this and he did that well they don't want to say that so they would rather say Oh, they're fallen angels. And scientists will say, 
I kind of agree with them and say, and we come, we're star children. We come from them. Well, I'm sorry, honey. One, Dar Darwinism tried to say it came from an ape. Well, I didn't come from an ape, nor a monkey, or a chimpanzee, or any of those. I, I didn't. You may talk about evolution until you're blue in the face, but I guarantee you, I did not come from a monkey, or a gorilla, or an ape, or any of that. I, I do believe evolution is called change. So when Adam and Eve partook of the forbidden fruit, and they fell from the Garden of Eden, of course there was a change happen. So they were evoluted from perfection into a fleshly body that would die. So that's the only evolution you're going to get me to admit to. But for me, for me to accept, say, oh yeah, I come from the star. I'm, I'm a star child. You know, the aliens had me, gave me life. No, they did not, because they're fallen angels. If a fallen angel had gave birth to me, or made me, then I would be like a giant, and I would be evil. Because their DNA would be in my, my DNA. No. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. God created human beings not the fallen angels we are not star children i know the native americans here in the united states think they're they're char star children and for some reason i believe that these fallen angels did come i mean there's par paraglyphs over out there in new mexico and and colorado and utah and different places of, uh, on walls showing these creatures coming down even showing like uh, planes like helicopters and different things um, let me tell you I believe at some time or another there was some fallen angels that come down and convinced the Native Americans my people because I'm part Cherokee as well as part Jewish, I mean, you know, I'm part Cherokee, so therefore, they have have convinced my ancestors that we come from them. Well, I didn't. My, my ancestors may have believed that, may have been deceived and believed that, but definitely I did not come from any fallen angel. Their DNA is not in my bloodstream at all. So, no, I didn't come from a fallen angel. Um, but could they have come down, and do, could they still come down with some of these scientists back in the 40s? You know, Hitler was really big into fallen angels or, um, or aliens, as they call them. And believed in getting technology and there was some things that they created that was beyond man's reasoning and could have been come from a fallen angel that they assumed was alien so there's a lot of things went on back in the 40s a lot a lot of mysterious and evil things happened in the 40s more than what people know so could this Philadelphia experiment happen yeah I believe so could history be repeating itself right now before our own eyes maybe we don't know we don't know what the, the terrorists, the radical Muslims have. We have no idea what they have or what they could get a hold of or what kind of experiments because they have money. They do. 
from some of their leaders. They have money beyond reasoning of being able to promote and, and even get scientists to work for them. Was this an experiment that they decided to pull to see if it would work? Who knows? I, I, I still believe they were t uh, that something was being tested on that airplane. Because if it had crashed, there would be fragments of it somewhere. If it had exploded in the air, there would have been debris thrown across. I mean, logic tells you, if you explode, the, those two buildings that exploded in New York, in Harlem, there was a man saying there was bits and pieces just thrown everywhere. Whenever there was an explosion, it just blows it up and throws it into the air and it lands everywhere. When the towers went down, it exploded and went everywhere. Paper was found miles and miles away that come from the towers. So, if there's an explosion, you would definitely see debris of some kind scattered. If the plane went down and crashed, it would have exploded and debris everywhere. There's nothing. Nothing. It's like the plane did not, had not existed. And it blinked out. They keep saying it blinked out. Now they're saying that the last words that the pilot said was just normal. I, I don't know. They have not said exactly what they said. So I don't know what they said. So evidently they must have words from the pilots now. Unless the pilots was part of this experiment. Who knows? Al-Qaeda and Hamas is really prevalent over there in that country, around in that country. So who knows what they believed and what they would be part of. So there's something going on bigger than what we know. And it's going to keep going. Now Passover is soon to be here. And on Passover there's a full blood red moon. Which means there's something going to happen to Israel. Every time there's a full blood red moon that's on the feast. Because there's one on Passover. One on uh, Tabernacles. The beginning of the feast and the ending of the feast of this year. And next year it hap re happens again. So there's something going on about Israel. So would this experiment have something to do with what they hoped to do with Israel? Who knows? And of course they hate America. I mean, come on. Little Satan and Big Satan and we're part of that. So what are we? What, what is going on? There's something going on, people. We need to really pray and get our hearts right with God. Yeshua is my protector. He takes care of me. Whether in death or in life, it doesn't matter. He still takes care of me. Satan can't touch me in any way, shape, or form. I don't have his stupid DNA flowing through my veins from a monkey or from a, a fallen angel who floats around in some spaceship up there. No. No. I'm a child of God. I have his DNA flowing through me. And you can't tell me any difference. I'll soon be 70 years old, people. I've seen a lot of things. Mysterious things that I've never talked about. Maybe one day I will. If the Lord leads me. But I have truly seen some strange things and very mysterious things upon this earth. Things that would make your hair curl. Some things that just set me back on my heel and I'd be going... <sighs> For a minute, the fear would rip my heart and I'd go, 
And then I begin to pray. Father, just help me. Protect me. And it would pass. And the event would slowly fade away. I mean, real things. Real things. Shocking things. And I would have, sometimes I would have people with me that seen the same thing I saw. And we would talk about it afterwards. So I know it was real. I know it was real. It wasn't fake. So, let me assure you that we are going to see more things happen here on earth. They're only the beginning because we are in the very last days. The very last days. The Antichrist is coming soon. And these things will happen to set up the archway of him being revealed. And it will be so shocking. So many people will fall on their knees and on their face before this man or this thing. I want to call him a thing. And they'll worship him. Oh yeah, they'll worship him. And unless you know Yeshua HaMashiach and know who he really, really, really is, and you have him deep in your heart and you're filled up with him, you could be deceived. You could. There will be some that will be deceived. It says so in the scriptures. Get your Bible out and read. But you need to prepare yourself that you will not be deceived. you got to keep your eyes on Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. The Son of God who died for you on a cruel cross. Because, see, they want to take away the cross. They want to do away with that cross. They already want to do away with the cross. Some places are telling you have to take cross down. I have a cross in my front yard. I'm going to leave it there. Even if they come and tell me I have to take it down. They may pull it down, but I ain't taking it down. I'm not. And when I get that place down there and we move down there, the cross, there will be a cross down there. And one other thing will be added to it. A menorah. A menorah will stand out there by the cross. And I'm not going to take them down. That means I go to jail. Okay, I'll go to jail. I will chain myself to it to keep them from taking it down. So they'll have to cut the chains and haul me off. And then they'll be able to take it down. But I'm not taking the cross nor the menorah down. They will stand for Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Even if it means my death. I will be a witness to the world that Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, came and died on a cruel wooden cross for our sins. I will. So I'll put the Philadelphia experiment down below. And you just pray about it. Pray about it. And pray for those people that's on the plane. God only knows what's going on with them. Pray for them. I plead the blood over them. Blessings in the name of Yeshua, HaMashiach. Amen and Amen.